Welcome to Anders and Penn Sunday Brunch Menu 6 for Sunday, May 8th, 2022. Brian, how are you? Fantastic. How are you? Excellent. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I don't uh, think my mother's going to be watching, but she is. <laughs> but we can say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are watching because uh, they're happy because they're watching. I, I hope so. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I understand you have a joke you have to tell me right away. Well, I do. You know, the other day I was cooking. Right. I didn't know this, but thank I, you for I, I, informing I was, me. I was making some gumball, but all I had was uh, okra and sausage. Okra and sausage. Yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was kind of mediocre. Mediocre. <laughs> I like that one. Mediocre. <laughs> mediocre. I have one. <laughs> uh, what is tastier, an earth rock or a space rock? Rock or a space rock. I yeah. don't know. Well, a space rock is a little meteor. Oh. So when you speaking text of, that to your significant of, others, meteor is how you spell that. Yes. So it was a meaty joke day. Yeah. Meaty joke. Meaty day. joke. Yeah, you had sausage. I had that. Um, you are recently back. I am. Uh, last Sunday, we did a Sunday brunch, even though you weren't here. You were okay. in Chicago. Yes. And you went to the Chicago Pen Show on Thursday and Friday. How was it? It was fantastic to be on the other side of the table. The attendee side. Of the the attendee table. side of the table. Yep, yep. So, uh, first time that's happened in a long time. I heard thirteen years. Uh, thirteen years, I believe, is yeah. the number. So, but uh, so you went there on Thursday, and I think the week prior to that, we did a Sunday brunch on how to navigate a pen yes. show. Yes. From the moment you walked in, how many minutes or hours was it until your first purchase? Um, I am going to say. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. I, to your I first bought purchase. one pen on Thursday, and I bought it rather quickly because it was something you couldn't walk around the room; it might be gone. It, it, it was. It was a good deal as it was, and and so and so it was. It was inexpensive. So okay, and, but yeah, and yeah, it was quick. You did not spend your entire budget the first day. No, not at all. I bought one pen. One pen that day. Yes. And so then you spent the rest of the money on Friday. Uh, I got down to <laughs> literally down to one dollar. Uh, and later discovered a, a 10 in my pocket. But yeah, I, I got you, down to so $1. So you could have made another purchase. I could have but, made another purchase. Because uh, that is uh, the law, you know. If you go to a pen show, you have to spend your entire budget. Uh, uh, I think we forgot to mention that when we That's when we a generally it. accepted principle, yeah, I think. Yeah. But uh, it's not I, a law. I, took, I, I followed our rules. I took cash. I put it in an envelope. And when I got down to the end of the envelope, $1. I literally walked out of the room. I was huh. done. My you show done. was done. Because you had seen everything. Yes, and you saw a lot of people, I'm sure. Oh yeah, lots of lots of old friends, and uh, so that was that was the best part. Good, so you had a good time. So, um, I didn't make it because I spent my pencho budget here in Anderson. On Pence. the day before, <laughs> the yes, day before. yes, yes. Uh, before we go any further, uh, someone in the comments has asked that you show us your watch. Uh, today, today, put uh, your wrist there, and we'll see. What put we'll my do. wrist here. This is a, a, a Seiko Laurel. Uh, this is 1950s vintage, uh, but it has a really cool, uh, almost like an Ishime dial uh, with um, indices that are, are engraved into the chapter ring. So it's a really pretty cool. Uh, that was cool practically Seiko. a different language. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's how you, I felt getting into fountain pens. Yes, a section, uh, this or that. We have all these vocabulary terms that. You have to learn. Yes, yeah. There, so, there's some there's some different ones in the watch. That's but a nice watch. This is, uh, yeah, this is a fantastic one. Here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they specifically mentioned show us your Seikos. Because apparently yes. you're, you're wearing. A I, lot I of have Seikos. a couple. Yeah. So this one, I forget the year on it, but it's a, it's real pretty. I, I, you I are fell in love watches. with the dial. I, I'm not into watch. You have a couple. I have two watches. A one, uh, uh, what do you what do you call it? Uh, analog apple watch <laughs> well i have the apple watch and that's the only reason i wear a watch. yeah you have a mechanical a mechanical yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um that i used to wear because i liked watches and then i decided i didn't want anything on my wrist yeah and for years i didn't wear anything and then apple came out with it we'll, just, we'll put this on your wrist and it'll talk to your iphone and i said well i have to try that can't live without it i i, I am going to resist the apple watch I suggest you resist it because if you if you have one, it's the only one you want to wear. Yeah. Because it talks to the, your phone. Anyway, it's just far too convenient. Show and tell. Shall I go first? Go ahead. I brought uh, my entire 
collection of Lamy 2000s. Sort of. Sort of. Um, the Lamy 2000 uh, in Macrolon. Classic. And I've got two mechanical pencils because they come in 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.7. You've got some good use out of those, haven't you? You uh, can see this one's pretty shiny. That one is much older than this one. Oh, okay. Uh, and the four-color ballpoint. Yep. Because I just think the design is cute uh, and cool. And uh, like I always say, everybody needs a ballpoint. Well, my there most you, there recent. You get, you get three. My most four. Blue, red, green, and black. Black. Yep. Uh, my most recent Lamy two thousand is the stainless steel, which is well, that was my Chicago pen show. That was your. Money. That was your yeah, pen. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is not mine yet. It belongs to Anderson Pens, but one day I will have a stainless steel ballpoint because it is just. That's a neat. Very well, very cool. The cool thing about Lamy two thousand is. is Outside of the fountain pens, the rest of the, the modes aren't terribly expensive. So, If you're talking macro. In the, in the macro line, yeah. So your pencils, your, your ballpoints, your rollers are really very inexpensive. I'm going to say that even the fountain pen, the macro yeah, line, yeah, is a very good it's deal. It's affordable, affordable, yeah. Um, it's under $200. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a piston filler. It has a gold nib. And it's classic, classic design. Yes. Uh, released in 1966. Uh, hasn't changed much. Much, yeah. Uh, much. I couldn't identify any changes on it. If I saw one from perhaps 1968, I don't know if I would be able to tell the difference. Except maybe it does get smoother with mm -hmm, age. Mm -hmm. um, they probably probably the L mark on the on the bottom. They have uh, made some special editions. We've yes. seen them here. They had the Bauhaus, which was the blue the one, blue, which was, was 100th beautiful. anniversary. For for Bauhaus, and this is very Bauhaus. The design mm -hmm. is simple and functional. Uh, they had the brown one. I forget what that was commemorating. Was it the 50th anniversary of the pen itself? I forget. don't recall. They did make a red set uh, in 2013 yes. that I would dearly love to have, but they only made they one only set, made one. <laughs> and it was auctioned off at charity, uh, and I went for $25,000. It was the fountain pen and a pencil and a ballpoint and the four color. Um, so I'll never have the red one. <laughs> um, black amber. Black amber, uh, stainless steel, and then I forget what the occasion was, but then they took the stainless steel and put black amber on it. So it yep. becomes a darker color. Yeah, that, that was, was the, another that special was the, edition. That was the 50th anniversary. That was the 50th. Yeah. I, I don't know what the brown one was. I'll have to research that. I do not have the blue one. I do not have the brown one. Um, so you only have two. You I don't, don't have a collection yet. You tell me three is a collection. What is? Oh, oh, you've only got two. Pens. I, I have two. more than three Lamy 2000 things. Oh, <laughs> anyway, you took this to Chicago for me. Yes. Uh, yeah. Because I asked you to do something with it. What did I ask you to do? Uh, you wanted that ground down um, to an even finer, extra fine. Right. Uh, it's a German nib. And uh, I got this with an extra fine, but it made a very, in my mind, broad stroke on paper. So much so that I had you take it apart so we could see what it was marked. And it was marked extra fine. Um, so uh, I just had you take it down because you had the two-day event at Chicago, right. Anderson Pens. And Linda Kennedy made this into a nice fine uh, that I now want to put into, into my okay. stainless steel, which we will do... Uh, afterwards because we're gonna get inky fingers because you can do this without you can do it if they're uninked but you can actually do it I've seen you do it yes even when they have ink you just hold yep. them up like that and yeah yep. so uh, we'll each do one and I brought a towel so we can clean our fingers off great so but we'll leave that for the end because we'll be dirty afterwards okay what did you bring um, I brought the uh, the one pen uh, I got in Chicago that I am actually going to keep. This is an Esterbrook. This is an Esterbrook. And I'm going to say it's an SJ. It is not. I'm going to say it's an LJ. Uh, that's about right. Okay. It might be uh, an LJ. Well, it's uh, stickered. It, 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 it's longer than most normal LJs. So, uh, oh, it's, we'll, it's the, a long LJ. We'll just call it an LJ just for purposes. Um, it is stickered, uh, just have the original sticker on it. Um, but what makes this pen interesting is the color. 
So solid pastel colors like this were available, which we'll see later, uh, only in their pastel series. Now in England, they sold SJs and LJs in solid colors like this. However, this one is clearly marked on the barrel, made in USA. So this is a very unusual uh, sort. It shouldn't, shouldn't really exist. It shouldn't really exist. I have seen some long pastels before, uh, but I haven't seen one in dark gray. So uh, when I saw this, this actually uh, precipitated me buying every single Esterbrook that was on this, oh. uh, this friend's table. <laughs> Because I picked it up, he said to me, Brian, why don't you just buy the whole the whole bunch? And then we negotiated a deal. And, uh, I left his table with one dollar in my hand. So uh, and a bunch this, of pens and a bunch of pens. But this this one I'm going to keep uh, for the collection. And it's got your standard steel twenty five fifty six fine nib in it. All right, and you wrote this with it. Didn't I you? did. Yes, yeah. yes. So so that is unusual. Is it unusual? For, it you is, to, for you to find a pen at a pen show in Estabrook that you say, oh, I've never seen anything quite like that. I usually these days find one to two pens a year that I don't own uh, from vintage Estabrooks. So, but you're not going to a lot of pen shows either. When you go to pen shows, do you usually find one at every no, pen show? No. No. Because you've seen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did see one other uh, interesting Estabrook uh, that I didn't own was a prototype um Visu Master from 19, early 1940s, about 1941. That was actually a button filler or a piston. Uh, I think it was a button filler with a clear ink window. Um, but uh, uh, that was, of course, priced at prototype pricing. So you passed on that. Uh, I, I passed on it. But took the entire herd. I, I took the. I took well, these congratulations. Instead, so. And did it come inked or did you ink it? Uh, I he actually put ink in it, but I had a. Um, I had an ink sample. I wanted to put diamond silver fox in it, and uh, there wasn't enough in the ink sample to get it to fill for the lever. So I actually took the nib unit out, took a syringe, and filled the sack oh, okay. uh, via syringe. So not my normal mode, but well, uh, normally uh, you've never seen a pen quite like that. Yeah, uh, you. I would say that you don't normally ink those. I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, so I don't what normally. made this one special? Uh, we were going to talk about it today, oh, so you I did it just for us. I did it just oh, well, for us. Thank you. Uh, and I, did, I didn't have a pen on me, so I thought that would be appropriate. Oh, plus, you get to use it. Yeah. So this, uh, you did not restore it. No, no. I but didn't. it just worked. It just worked. Just yeah. Worked. So most excellent. Very nice. So, Very nice. That's uh, that's kind of a fun thing for me to find something that new. Congratulations. So, thank you. Uh, I suppose you're glad you went to the Chicago Pen Show. Uh, I am. I yeah. am. Yes. Yeah. It is quiz time. Ooh. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, this week you're playing for an ink sample of my most recent ink of the week, which was Sailor 50 States, Wisconsin. Oh, great. If you win this week, we're going to give that sample to Steph because Steph really wants a sample of that ink. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so you're playing for Steph. Okay. Uh, you have to get two, of the th two out of three correct. Uh, my first question is, what's tastier, an Earth Rock or a Space Rock? Let me pull the quiz out. Because you're probably going to get that one, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> On our YouTube channel, Steph recently debuted as Mr. Paper. Go, Steph. Which paper product did Mr. Paper review? I confess I did not watch that. Okay. I was busy last Did you hear rumors? I heard rumors. We've been trying to get this done for a while. Um, yeah, it's in that direction. <laughs> I'm thinking it was the Lamy paper. It, Lamy. The Lamy notebooks. Yes, Lamy notebooks. Yes. Um, and she did a bang up job, and I took the notebook afterwards to see if she was telling the truth, and she was. It's excellent paper. Really good okay. paper. Lamy did it so again. So it's really Mrs. Paper, Miss Paper. Uh, she said, I'm fine being Mr. Paper. I said, okay, let's make you Mr. Paper. It's the role. Whoever steps into it becomes Mr. Paper. So Steph is the current Mr. Paper. Question number two. Okay. Last Friday, I, two days ago, on our YouTube channel, we posted my top five under 100. And I know you have not seen it. I absolutely have not so seen it. So in four guesses, can you name three of my top five under 100, more than 50? Over 50, under 100. Over 50. How about... Um, uh, I'm just going to go there. Twisby AL 580, 580 AL. Uh, I give it to you. But I chose the ALR. ALR, okay. Because yep. I like the on the, the section ribbon. they yep. put the root. Yep, yep. Okay. 
Uh, how many do I have to get right? Two more. Two more. Uh, under 100, or between 50 and 100. How about... Uh, Kaveco Sport. All Sport. Uh, uh, all Star, you mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kaveco All Star. All Sport. I chose... All Star. All Sport. All I'm sport. getting mine mixed up, aren't I? All Sport. Uh, I chose the raw aluminum. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have two guesses to get one more. Uh, how about a Lamy Studio? Yeah, no. No. It was a Lamy, but I went... Lamy Lux. No. <laughs> the Ion. Oh, but that's, that surprises me. Yeah. Oh, it's a little beefier. It is beefier. It's a little yeah. beefier. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the studio is gorgeous, but yeah. uh, I, I like a little beefier. Okay. I also chose uh, uh, Schaefer Icon. Okay. Because they're just cool. Yeah, they are. Yep. And a Pilot Prera. Okay. Okay. Um, Steph, I don't know if you're going to get this. <laughs> um, you like brownies. I know you like brownies. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, Absolutely. Where was the brownie invented? Oh, that's easy. Oh, is it? Okay, good. That's easy. I, uh, it was actually Bertha Palmer's invention. It was invented at the Palmer House in Chicago. It's right. That's, that's what yes. I read. According yep. to most, the brownie was created at the Palmer House Hotel in Chicago. Where? What else is there? That Anderson Penn, Chicago. Anderson Penn, Chicago. The story goes, picture this, Chicago, 1893. Bertha Parker, wife of the man who owned the Palmer House Hotel, asked a pastry chef for a dessert suitable for ladies attending the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition. She requested a cake-like convection, conve- confection smaller than a piece of cake that could be included in box lunches. The result was the Palmer House Brownie. The Palmer House Hotel still serves a dessert made from the same recipe. Yes. Have you had it? I have had oh, it. you have had yes, it. Yes, it's very good. And, and in fact, uh, they now have, um, <clears throat> as you walk around the Palmer House, in certain places they have a QR code on the outside of the building that says, scan here for the recipe. Really? So you can get the recipe. Did not know this. And uh, um, make it yourself, the original recipe. Yeah. I was hoping that... Because you have a store at the Palmer House, you would have run across that. this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I don't think we've ever discussed it. I, no, I no, no. It's great. It. It's yeah. it's a good it's a good brownie. So Steph, you, I'll probably tell you before you see this video, but uh, you won you your, won Wisconsin. your Wisconsin Inc. Uh, and now what we're really here for is you're going to show me and everyone how to identify vintage Esterbrooks. And really, the three that I know are the J, the SJ, and the LJ. And even if they're right next to each other, I sometimes can't get it right. So yeah, there's, help us. There's, there's a couple things. So what we're going to do is, uh, uh, much to your chagrin, uh, I'm going to be using for examples today. Uh, these are pens that are going to appear in our, our uh, end of May uh, vintage mailer. Oh, these, these are going uh, to be for sale. These will be for sale, yes. Um, so uh, I had these in Chicago uh, for the show. But we're gonna we're gonna start from the beginning. We're gonna work our way up to J, S, J, and L, J, and then you can kind of see uh, how everything fills in. I'm I'm thinking I see some dollar pens. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Rick started making pens around 1931-32. Fee clip pens. They're very short lived. Um, I don't actually have one here. Um, I took it out of the case. But uh, they're very scarce. You're not likely to actually run across them. Um, so in 1933-34, uh, Estabrook changed the clip because the original clip was so tight against the body and so thin that if you put it into your shirt pocket, usually what happens, you'd bend the clip uh, and it would fall out or the clip would break off. So they redesigned the clip and we got what uh, is now we refer to it as a two-hole clip. Uh, these come in multiple configurations. There's uh, this kind with the oval cutouts and there's no rib there. This one's got a rib going up the top, um, but uh, we all call them two hole clips. And during the time they had two prices for their pens. They had two standard lines. They had your st- standard colors, and then they had these fancy or marbled ones. That's very fancy. Uh, and these were these were priced at $1.50, and then these were priced at a dollar. So today we call them dollar pens and dollar fifty pens. Oh, okay. It is not what Estabrook called them. They were, they had different model names, so. Um, but that's what, Yes, we call yeah. them today. These are dollar pens. Yeah. So if we, if we if we refer pens. to dollar pens, t- technically we're referring to these 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 two whole clip pens uh, in the standard available in the standard what we call the standard six colors. 
So black, blue, gray, green, red, copper. Okay, and uh, these are the dollar fifty pens. Dollar fifty pens had had had, had fancier names, uh, you know, pearl Fancy. pearl green Morocco okay. red. And all of these are dollar pens. These are all dollar okay. pens. Yeah, so you can kind of see the the difference in material. These here. are smaller, aren't these seventy five cent pens? <laughs> no, no. Actually, the, the interesting thing was so uh, there are three sizes. Um, essentially, we're going to consider them full size, uh, full length. Full length and slender, and then slender and short. So much like uh, we'll see in a bit, we okay. had... There's three sizes? There's three sizes. Do that again? I, I, I misunderstood. So there's full size. Full size? There is full length, but slender. Okay. Full length, slender, and... And then there is slender and short. Okay. So, for example, this one here is what... This is the full size pen. Um, actually, probably the most common dollar pen you're going to find. Um, but this is the model B. Uh, um, uh, B. B. Yeah, as in boy. As in boy. As in Brian. Um, then, then this is the full length but slender pen. So you can see this oh, one wow. here. See, that's a very small difference. Very, very small difference. Now, the way, but it's slender, but the way you can tell is by looking at the top of the cap. And so you see here, I usually look for the space after the K oh, yeah, and before the E, tell. and there, there's much more I would, here. I probably, oh, so there's much more lip here, really. Yeah, yeah okay. there's more space on the other side of the imprint than there is on this one. So if you're ever in doubt, the full-size one has this, this space here. So this is the model, this is the slender, full-length of slender, but it's the model A. A. So there's B, B and A and A, and so then a lastly, C. slender and short is called the model H. Interesting. So it's B, A, and H in order. Do we have any idea why? Uh, no idea why. Okay. No idea why. Uh, the H are actually fairly hard to find. Uh, they're available. They come across once in a while, but by far in wide, the model B, the full size, is the most common. Um, yes, I, I've seen there. these. I don't know that I've seen these, but it's difficult to tell the difference. I don't know that I've ever seen the Model H. Yeah, so, so slender, slender is is fairly unusual as well. So sometimes you know you you, you do have to look. Now they all use the same nibs, uh, so you can swap interchangeably amongst each side size. Uh, so those are the three pens, uh, basically the three models that they made up to including 1941. Uh, this here is a particular late example, uh, wartime era, where they removed the band oh. and they just engraved lines in there for it to be a cap band. But we still call that a... This is still a dollar dollar, a dollar pen. Uh, uh, and we, uh, a two-hole clip, is that what Yeah, we would call this a bandless oh, dollar okay. pen. Um, but in other words, it's just like everything else. So they removed that and, and during the war, they also switched from steel nibs to... Uh, palladium silver, that's not what this is, but they would have a palladium silver nib uh, originally. So they're removing some of that steel and going with, with silver instead. So those are, th those are the early pens up to about 1942. There's a couple of pens I don't have here uh, in the Esterbrook chronology, but you're not likely to run across them. Uh, in 1941, uh, Esterbrook came out with a Model J, which is their, their first J, which was called the Visu Master. Very scarce pen. You're not going to see it uh, very often. But eventually, it trickled down to this model, which is starting to look a little bit more familiar uh, in the J series, except it has a flat barrel end, much like your dollar pens. Oh, yes. But it has a new, really, new redesigned cap, three ribs on the top, new clip, no imprint on the clip. So really, really nice uh, deco looking pen. And then of course your standard section and nib. And this is an Astrobrook J. This is, this is an Astrobrook J. Okay. So uh, we kind of lump pens from 1943 uh, to 47, uh, kind of in a transitional uh, uh, terminology because they had, st there's a, a progression between your flat barrel end uh, clips with and without imprints. We change 
Uh, we changed jewel type from this three rib jewel to what is later accepted as our, our standard jewel, the round jewel. Uh, there are some imprint variations uh, that we go through from uh, copying the same imprint that's on your dollar pens to moving into, into your later 1948 J-series pens. So there's a transitional run, uh, about four, uh, maybe five different variations all, all around, but they're all going to have this kind of configuration. We're going to have a rib down the center of the, the lever now, whereas previously it was just a plain lever. And these as well came in uh, three sizes. Uh, most often you'll find them in the full size model. Uh, Demi's in um, slender models are, are really very tough to find. Okay. So, uh, but uh, standing way back, what we have here are dollar fifty pens, mm -hmm. dollar pens, yep. and J's. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now we're now we're getting into J's. Um, J's, as as everybody pretty much knows, it started right around 1947, where we start getting adding a second jewel in a tassie on the barrel end, kind of tapering that off a little bit. And by now we have the name also on the clip. We've got the round jewel. And we still have this, um, this the earlier style had this spade style lever and then we had a spoon style that uh, came out a little bit later. But uh, these pens also came in three sizes. So the full size model is the J and Oftentimes you have a hard time telling what size is what. The J is the easiest one to tell because if you take the cap off and the barrel and look at the jewel on the bottom, the cap jewel is always larger than the barrel jewel. On a J. On a J. When both ends have jewels. Yes. Okay. Yes. Always. Always. So, um, and that, this is what makes uh, restoring some vintage Estabrooks difficult because this jewel is only on the cap of this pen, whereas the LJ and the SJ, which we'll look at in a second, all use the same size jewel on the cap as on the barrel end. So gotcha. if you break a, a jewel on a cap of an LJ or an SJ, you can get one from a barrel of even a J. Uh, so these, these are hard to find. Yes, yeah. They command, you know, if, if you're buying vintage, and it has a chipped jewel, don't expect you're going to be able to replace it. Uh, and it, sh it will affect the value. Okay. Uh, it does, obviously, it doesn't affect the way the pen writes. You also uh, said uh, at the bottom they put a, a jewel and a tassie. And a tassie, a little metal ring there. That metal ring is a tassie. Yeah. Okay. I call it tassie. Uh, so let's move on to some other colors here. So, and again, these, these, these came in three different sizes. Um, let's see if I can find a, the full size. And then a long but slender, full length but slender. And that's the LJ, which before in the dollar pens was what model? And the dollar pens. The that's slender, full length but slender. Was the, uh, we had a B and a C. An A. H. An A. A. Yes. <laughs> we never uh, had the C. But uh, but here, if I you look, I know there's going to be a test. I should have been taking notes. <laughs> but here, if you notice, the oh, cap the jewel size. and the barrel jewel are the same size and interchangeable. Yes. Are they even removable? They're very difficult to okay. get off, but you can take them off. You can uh, easier to get this one off than this one because we, you have to punch it through the back. Oh, okay. Um, LJ, uh, which interestingly enough was not listed in many of their later catalogs. They actually only listed J and SJ. And you can see the difference here. The SJ, shorter, but same girth as the LJ. And again here, those are the same size. Yes. So usually in the wild, sometimes you'll have, you're more likely to have a problem guessing which size it is between SJ and LJ uh, because Unless you have one sitting next to another. Unless you know, yeah, unless you have one sitting next to another. Um, but, uh, same idea, this one, same idea here. So regular section, regular nib, again, all nibs are interchangeable amongst all sizes, interchanges about interchangeable between the, the earlier models as well. Uh, so you've got three different sizes, uh, which is a J J an SJ SJ and an LJ. And I don't know what the terminology was, but we can just, we can think in our head law LJ is a long but then J and SJ is a short, short J, short J, and SJ, a long J. Yeah. but it's, it's no longer than a J. 
It's just the LJ. No, okay. no, it's not. It's it's just roughly the same length but slender. Um, so these again, these came in the standard six colors: black, blue, uh, gray, green, red, and copper. So here's your red. Here's your gray. And colors did have did vary wildly wildly uh, between productions. So you'll see these two. These two are both gray, but they're different. Uh, different shades, actually. But this is a green. No, this is That's gray. A gray. That's gray. Yeah, that's a gray pen. Because, because let's see if we've got some greens here. Greens are really green. Greens are really green or very lime. Uh, here's a few more. Look at all those greens. Uh -huh. <laughs> these are all these are all gray. Um, and I got a bunch of blues here. And this is the copper. Now copper also comes in a couple of different colors too, uh, lighter. Uh, darker. So, and is this a J and LJ and an SJ? You tell me. SJ, LJ, J. And how did you make that? Uh, as because they're sitting right next to each other. Uh, <laughs> this looks thinner than this one. Yes. That, and this uh, is shorter. In this case, that's exactly how this happens to work out. Um, this is a full, this is the full, full size model. That's easy to tell. Um, and then this is the same length, but slender and slender and short. So yes, J, L, J, S, J. Phew. Okay. And we wanted to look at green. green. So I've got some greens in here and then we're going to move on to the next, next batch. Uh, so here's a couple more uh, copper and you will notice you three distinct different colors here. And they're um, all copper. And they're all copper. Okay. Estabrook only used the term copper. I want to I make, 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 that, make that very clear. Uh, this particular model here uh, in the middle is, uh, is an English model. And uh, some of the English J variants have a, a much different material. They're, they're, they're much lighter. They have a little bit, uh, I don't know what the, the, the word to use is, but they're much well, they, smoother they, they looking. Look completely different. Yes. This has got all sorts of movement in it, and that yeah. seems like it has lines. Yeah, and this is this is but classic. These are both called copper. They're both copper. Yep, yep. Yeah. And uh, this one here is also copper, but wow. it's a much much darker That's brown. It's brown. It's not. It's not faded because you can see that the color is. And these pens don't usually fade, uh, which is the nice thing. Uh, some people will call this root beer, uh, but that was not a term that that Estabrook used. But for me, it's it's a dark copper. And then here's some of your your, your greens. You'll see notes. There's this one that's kind of like all an olive. These are green. These are all green. Okay. These are all what size? SJ. SJ. That's correct. Yeah. These <laughs> these, these are SJs. Um, they're fairly pocket size. Interesting thing to note: the full size J is actually the same size as the new. Uh, the new Esterbrook JR. Okay. The J so, Revisited. The J Revisited. Yeah. It's not Junior. No. It's, it's J, J revisited. Uh, revisited is what it is. But it's the exact same size uh, length. Okay. Because I own one of those. You do? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, it looks like, I mean, I don't have it here, but mm -hmm. this doesn't look any larger or smaller. No. No. Uh, so so the, the, this this right here takes us up to about 19 uh, through 1955. You'll have those color options. Uh, in 1949, they came out with um, some pastel pens, of which there are two main models. Uh, the most uh, common model you will see is, is this model here. And you'll notice it is shorter than the SJ. Yes, it's the, the J Mini? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's the CH is the model. The CH. Uh, we just call them pastel pens primarily because only the pastel pens came in this size. Except the one you bought in Chicago. Except the one I bought in Chicago, okay. which happens to be an LJ, a LJ in size. Yeah. Okay. Um, but for the most part, the the American made pastels are, uh, are, are this size. CH size. They also made an unusual duck in a very f select few colors, um, a clipless model, um, which is called the model H. This is the CH. This, this is the is CH, the and this is the H. Uh, for Esterbrook historians, that's confusing, of course, because the slender two-hole clip dollar pen was also called the Model H. I'm going to stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you are not likely to run across this pen very often. Um, I think I have, to date, in 25 years of collecting, 
found three different colors that it comes in. Uh, this is one of them. Okay. Very rare pen. But uh, first run of uh, pastel pens always had black jewels. Okay. Okay. Uh, they were all black, and those are the first run of pens. Uh, after a few years, they changed colors. And they went to, and you can see the wide variety of, uh, of, of colors they came in. They started going with uh, color matching or, or similar colors on the jewels. So pink came with pink instead of black. Uh, this one is called Temple Red, red with red jewels. Uh, one of my favorites, the Aloha Gold with yellow gold jewels. You've got green, you've got uh, the dark blue. This is a pastel. These are pastels here. This is not a pastel. Those are not pastels, okay. yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so while we're talking about these, you'll notice also there are some white, uh, white pastels here. Uh, here's white with white, and here's white with black. You'll see that's got an educational sample stamp on it. Uh, but you also hear reference to nurse pens. Now, nurse pens are white, and they can come with black, red, or uh, the very rarest is green jewels, and those are for shift work. So... Um, but how do you determine a nurse pen from a pastel pen? Well, quite simply, the nurse pen is actually SJ size, whereas the pastel is uh, CH size. CH size. Yes. So, um, and the other thing to look for too is you'll notice on all pastels, they all have this teeny tiny little section. So that's a pastel section. Uh, the standard SJ section, uh, uh, if you see that on a white pen, that means it should, it's a good indicator it should be a nurse, a pen. nurse pen. But otherwise, they look identical. And nurse pens, of course, are considerably more valuable and harder to find than uh, their pastel counterpoints. So, and what are these guys? Uh, matching pencils. Okay. And with pastels, they came, you could get them an option, what they called a petite pack, which was a, a little uh, vinyl plastic uh, uh, pen case that held two pens. And usually they had some kind of floral uh, or uh, fake jewel uh, design on them. Uh, and they were clearly marketed towards women so that you could you could put that in your purse and keep your pens together. And we're somewhere in the 50s here. We're in the mid 50s here. Okay. Um, and then we go back to this model, which uh, you, you're probably familiar with. Uh, these are LJs and SJs, but they have this uh, unique striped pattern on the barrel. I think they were called icicles. Collectors call them icicles. Esterbrook actually just called this the Esterbrook Classic. Esterbrook Classic, as um, in the C. With the C, yeah. C, a classic is what they called it. Uh, but as an SJ, in this case, we've got, you can see the stripes. The green is much more vivid green than your standard green. Um, does this have stripes? Uh, this one does have stripes, yeah. You can see it. Oh, yes. You can see it on the barrel. Very light. A couple different various versions of these, but... Uh, what's interesting about these is you will often find these made in other countries. For example, this one here is actually made in Mexico. Uh -huh. So it has the Mexico, the H-O-M-A-C-O stamp on it. And that is an LJ. This is an LJ icicle. Now, icicles really only came in two sizes. LJ, the most common, and SJ, which is the most uncommon. Uh, you know, oh. it's this green one, which is the best color of the group. Uh, five colors, blue, green, gray, red, and copper. So obviously you can't make a black icicle. Um, this, if I told you I was looking for an LJ Classic, you would know I wanted an LJ. Most with most people will use the term icicle. Most people don't. But you would know classic. Uh, is an I icicle. would. I would. I would ask. You'd yeah. say you mean icicle. You mean an icicle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are icicles. Um, and let's move on to the next batch here. And again, these are all pens that are gonna show up uh, in the mailer at the end of the month. There's another icicle. Uh, next up here is a very interesting pen, um, and it's very interesting for, for Esterbrook's that history. This is a Pininfarina. This is uh, actually what is called the Esterbrook Safari. So this pen came out in 1958 for Esterbrook's 100th anniversary. Um, and they hired uh, Henry Dreyfus, the same gentleman who designed the Skyline, to design this pen. It's a lovely design. It has a nice tapered cap, almost Waterman-esque, going the other way. I don't know if I've ever seen one. Um, these came in two different varieties. Well, the, as the story goes, 
uh, and if you look at them and you feel them, the plastic on the cap is fairly thin. So oftentimes what happens, uh, your first uh, idea is you'll see that this, this ring here will be missing and the caps will crack. Uh. They're very thin. Uh, so after about a year of that happening, Estabrook took this cap, they got rid of it, and they switched to a metal cap. So sometimes they can be referred to as deluxe safaris. It's just an easier way to, to describe it. First them. year safaris? Uh, well, first gen, first generation. First gen. Uh, but these were cartridge converter pens, so or cartridge pens. And they came with Estabrook's um, um, two cartridge system where you butt the yellow ends up to each other, and then you huh. always have uh, you always have ink. So that goes in there that way. No converter for these. Uh, but uh, only green no they came in a variety of colors um and uh and you will find them usually like i say you usually find them with metal caps if you find them with plastic caps and they're not cracked then that's the safaris with metal find. caps also have this slant at the top yep it looks identical except it's just a metal uh, a metal cap interesting so uh, a neat pen that didn't last very long uh, also evolved into uh what is called the, the plunger fill pen which is, is like a touchdown and it'll have a metal cap, but it has a blind cap on the bottom. Uh, operates just like a Schaefer touchdown in that you, when you push down on the rod, you pull it out and you push down, it will compress the sack inside uh, and then that will fill up the pen. Usually you find those, they either work or they don't. And uh, after tearing apart a couple, it's really difficult to get them actually to work if, you, okay. if they don't work. So um, what thus, year are we now? So now, uh, now, now we're going to move into, I'm going to take a little step back here. I put all my deluxe pens together. Uh, back in 1949, Estabrook was trying to uh, get in on the, uh, the Parker 51 market with the metal cap pen. So they came up this pen, which uh, if you look at it, it, is pretty identical to an LJ. It's slender. We have jewels that are the same size, uh, but we have a different, different set of, uh, of colors here and a metal cap and in the beginning the first generation of these had friction fit caps so this is what's called the sm deluxe a couple things you'll notice here the lever is plain we're back to a plain lever again no more rib in the middle like the j's have so you'll see that one's got the rib this one is no no rib uh first generation had this friction fit cap and when you put it on here you'll see there's a little spring to it um Second generation had a, a threaded cap. So when you come across these, your, your, your best bet is to try to see if the cap twists. And if you twist it on that ring, you will feel a little friction so you know that this one comes off this way. I gotcha. Uh, matching uh, colored sections, and yes, they do sometimes discolor. Sometimes uh, you'll see them different colors, but that's, that's correct. Do we know what this color was called? Uh, this color is called sand. Oh. Uh, one of my favorite good. colors in the series. Uh, and then they have kind of burgundy-ish matching jewels um, this color uh, is, is a little bit different and I will have you guess what color this is well offhand I would say it's black but you're gonna tell me it's not black it's very dark eggplant uh, it is uh, this is oh, it's called midnight midnight uh, and if you look at the jewels you will see the jewels are actually a midnight blue a dark dark blue Okay, and I will take your word for it. So uh, it, it's difficult to tell. The, the Midnight usually has a tendency. I, I do believe this pen does change. Uh, and you'll see on this section, maybe it looks a little bluer. But they look dark. They look black. Um, but they are, they're in fact, there well, never was a... black, right? Yes. Yeah, but they so in, there's the, a little difference. A little bit of difference. Uh, in fact, they only ever made five colors and black was not one of them. Ah. So, uh, and this one too also has, you'll see... Just that clutch ring so this one is a, a friction fit so these are the sm deluxe they ran from uh, 49 to about 1954 and in 55 they changed the design they went to a little bit uh, a little bit different style here a little bit chunkier a um, little bit more squared off we have a, a, a tassie on the bottom here uh, and these are going to be all uh, threaded caps and now we went back to a ribbed ribbed lever and this is called the LK Deluxe. LK. And they made these in a, a number of interesting colors. And you'll see this a lot on LKs. See this little yes, posting mark here? Posting. Yeah, the plastic's pretty uh, pretty soft. And so that is a common, common problem on all these pens. 
If you do find one that doesn't have a mark there, I highly recommend you never post the pen because it'll happen uh, immediately. It, it will happen, yeah. Uh, but uh, use the same style clip, the same style lettering that you see on the SM, just a little bit different. You will also see that these uh, these end tassies here are usually fairly thinly chrome plated and the plating will flake off. That's not uncommon. So we've got emerald green there and this one here is uh, colonial gray. So uh, these came in. Of course, all these could come with matching pencils. We won't, we won't even get into those. Okay. Um, pencils were available for everything. Uh, moving into the, the late 50s here, um, a couple of Esther books, uh, interesting pens. I find these pens very nice to travel with. Uh, the first one here is uh, interesting pen. So these are all plastic. They use the same nib units, but this one here has an aerometric squeeze converter built in. So this particular model is called the A101. The A101. A101. So they made them in a number of colors. Um, they also made a cartridge only version. The A102. Which is called the CA CA one cartridge, yeah. And so it uses a uh, a proprietary cartridge, that no uh, a little bit exists. that no longer exists, a little bit bigger. You can uh, you can retrofit uh, Schaefer cartridges will fit in there if you pre puncture them. Uh, a couple other options, uh, but a cartridge. The nice thing about this is every single part of this comes apart. And I used to travel with these because I liked the fact that if somebody was going to uh, need to see my pen uh, in an airport, you can take all this apart just all by unscrewing and screwing pieces together. So there's nothing that can break here if uh, TSA decides they want to. Is that eyedropperable? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, it might be. It might be. I wouldn't recommend it, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be a... Is that a breather hole there? Yeah, there was a hole there. <laughs> okay. actually. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Well, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. So these are uh, um, uh, these are, and, and the only way to tell these apart is by taking the barrel off. So they made these all in both the Aerometric A101 version and the cartridge CA101 oh, okay. version. So, uh, and last but not least, uh, in this week's display, um, Uh, this pen, which is also one of my favorites, a um, little bit different design. This is much later. We're talking into the 60s now, 59, 60 era. We have a new cap. We have this little indentation in the top here, which is kind of interesting. That is interesting. Um, we have a uh, new clip design, threaded cap, and these are what are called the M2. M2. M2, and these are also aerometric fill. So the barrel unscrews, and then we have a built-in aerometric converter here. So, was there any reasoning behind these naming these model numbers? I have no idea. No idea. Okay. Um, but these have uh, plastic threads on a metal cap. Uh, so yes, uh, posting here actually doesn't seem to be as bad as on the LK, but you can chew up a barrel pretty easy. It's pretty soft plastic. Uh, and these are, are, are notorious for, for cracking the caps. the caps. So when you buy an M2, you do have to look and, and make sure that the cap is not cracked. Uh, there's actually an inner liner in here for the threads. And usually over time, uh, that puts pressure on the cap and you'll see cra uh, cracks. What is the cap made of? Uh, it's just some kind of metal. Metal, but it yeah. cracks. Okay. But it will crack, yeah, yeah. You'll see that a lot. So they made them in a number of different colors. Uh, matching pencils um, in a couple of different styles. And uh, for the uh, collector in all of us, they made them with Estabrook name on the clip. They made them without it on the clip. And usually when they took the, if they didn't have it on the clip, they had it here on the cap band. Occasionally you'll find it in both places. Um, but uh, lots of different variations in the M2. Can you bring that other? Yes. Back here from the I'm not sure if I were at a pen show and just walking by tables, with the exception of this one. If I were to see these on a table, mm -hmm. I wouldn't automatically say, oh, look at the Estabrooks. Yeah, yeah. You would, of course. Yeah, well, you, you know, know that's, like. some, of the, some of the colors are unique. You know, you have this lovely light pastel blue, this lovely light green. Um, you know, sand is definitely an interesting color. 
Um, so I, mean, I suppose I would immediately recognize them as vintage pens, yeah. but not immediately as Estabrook vintage pens. Right. Right. And, and what, once you get a few of the design cues down, you you, you know even if it's a color uh, you haven't seen before. What was this called? That's the M2. Now see, this might not even have struck me as a vintage pen. Yeah. So, uh, it's not as high quality as, as even this SM Deluxe or even the LK Deluxe, uh, but it's still an Estabrook. It still uses the exact same nib unit. On all these pens, we can, we can still use the same nib unit. On all of them? Yep. Every pen we've seen Every here. single one, yep. Interesting. So their entire, their entire life from 1931 to, uh, you know, the, the, the bitter end in, in, in the early uh, 1971, all the pens will use the same nib unit. So 31 to 71. Yeah. And then what happened? Uh, and then they went out of business. They went out of business. Yeah, they went out of business. And um, when you go to any pen show, you go to any eBay, <laughs> there's always, at least the J's, the SJ's, the LJ's, mm -hmm. they're... They're the most common. Yeah, they're very common. Uh, how many pens do we suppose they made? That they're... Lots. They're lots. still now, with us. That, that, that's a good point because you'll often see, there. there is a bit of Esterbrook history that um, is often misquoted um, one of the Estabrook had a promotional brochure in, in some of their dip pen boxes and it talked about how, uh, prolific Estabrook was in, in, in making dip pen nibs and, in, in how many thousands and thousands they made. Uh, and, uh, the quote is, oh, but they called them pens then, didn't they? They called them pens. Yeah. And so what happens is people see that and they say, well, we're making, we're making a million pens. A but year, they meant dip pen. They meant dip pen nibs that you know you're selling 144 in a box. That's this big. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people will often. Uh, I've seen it even in um, well, quite uh, quite nice you know magazines. I've seen I've seen the the, the error made that Estabrook made millions of fountain pens a year. Well, the just, nomenclature has completely changed. It's 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 simply not true. Uh, there, J's, LJ's, SJ's are, are very common. You you will see them, but. Um, but probably not millions. They're years. not in millions. Okay. Yeah, they're not in the millions. Yeah, yeah. And 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 they they last a long time. They, they do. They haven't all just fallen apart. No. Uh, the nice thing about most Esther Brooks, uh, with the exception of some of the early ones uh, made out of celluloid, I am starting to see some of those now uh, more than I used to uh, start to turn and possibly crystallize. Uh, those are really usually very early dollar fifty pens, uh, some early dollar pens, but. The materials themselves, unlike uh, unlike say Parker, uh, much more expensive pen. They're black and pearl, as you know, changes color. They're jade, changes color. Uh, an Esterbrook pen, you know, uh, an Esterbrook green pen from 1940, is the same color today as it was when it was made. Yeah, you had a copper one before you went to the pen show. That was, I almost yes, bought it. I it, was, it. It was really, it was really one of nice. the one of the one of the best ones in in the bunch and sold in Chicago and it did it's sell yes out of reach now but it looked like it could have just been made yes. last week yes they, they hold up very well uh, you do run into the same issues you have with uh, with many other brands you, know, you can even see it on this SM Deluxe we've got a little bit of uh, lever box here uh, area spread uh -huh. uh, so that tells me that somehow either the sack burst at some point. Uh, or the pen got wet, and you can actually see the outline of the lever spring on the barrel here because it has rusted and swelled up and deformed the barrel. So you, you can still see that. That's that that's reasonably common on Esther Brooks, but that's about the worst worst thing you're going to find short of chip jewels. So very interesting. Very interesting. But fun stuff. And then, then there's a, there are a few more models after this. They did some cartridge pens, and they really started to get kind of cheap, uh, getting into ballpoints and things like that. But this is a real – it's not a complete comprehensive overview, but it gets you it gets you started. It's much more than I can digest in one Sunday brunch. <laughs> B-A-H-J-L-J-S-J-C-H-H. <laughs> but you've been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, 20 oh, – almost 30 years. Almost 30 yeah. years. Yep. That's why you go to a table at a pen show. You find a, an extra book uh, and, and they say, why don't you just take them all and, over? And then, right? This was on the table on Friday, so nobody spotted this all day Thursday and all day Friday. Uh -huh. So, I mean, and it's, you just, you don't, I mean, it's the first one I've been able to find, so. And you have a good eye. You spot things right away. Well, when you, when, when you have a singular focus, sometimes it really helps because you're, 
you, you know what you're looking for and you can you can easily skim over I, I can imagine we're probably going to get some questions in the comments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I will I'll keep my eye on them and let you know okay and yep, yep. if you can take a look once in a while because I won't be able to answer them I can try <laughs> then you can come along after me and there we correct go. me um, I am told that you only brought the one joke this week. I did. So I'll give you another one here. Uh, I can, I can oh, give you that one. one. I can give you one. Go ahead. Do uh, you know why they call a pretzel a pretzel? Why do they call a pretzel a pretzel? Well, it's not bread. Very good. Ah, it's just, yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> it's not bread. I'm going to use that later on today. <laughs> what do you call a guy from Indiana that just became a father? Father. Just because I have no idea. Uh, who's your daddy? Oh, oh! You do have to watch the last podcast. Okay, for oh. Ink Bottle Dude's first joke. Okay, made me laugh out loud. Really did. Um, next week we're gonna do this again. Yes, absolutely. Uh, AP Sunday Brunch Menu Seven. You're gonna show me and everyone else how to disassemble and clean a piston converter. Okay. Um, and oftentimes I wish I could disassemble them. I think. Are we, we going to do these disassemble these in advance on like last week trying to take apart maybe, that Estabrook nib? Maybe. Um, which, which did come apart later. It seems to me that all of them should come apart. But sometimes I'll run across one and I think this is not coming apart. Yeah. Uh, so you'll show me the tricks for that. We do have one more thing to do. Here. Oh, yes. I want to go home with a, a new nib. Clean up my mess here. You take that one apart. I'll take this one apart. Okay. Now, what's, what's the deal here? I've seen you do it. You just twist off the whole section. Yeah. So the, the first thing is, especially on the Macrolon version, uh, you want to make sure if you're doing this, uh, do it somewhere where if if this clutch ring falls. Now the clutch ring is a little ring, but it has little things that stick out. Yes. And that's what actually holds that's the cap That's what holds on. the cap on. You don't want to that lose that. That one has the same thing? Yes. Okay. Uh, this one is positioned in here a little bit differently, so it's not as easy to fall out as it is. This on one so falls out. People lose them all the time. People lose them all the time. So don't do this over the sink unless you've got one of those. We have one of those little the nib, nib saver. Nib can savers. also be yeah. a clutch saver. Yes, it is. Um, so this just unscrews. This, you can just grab it and, and twist and it. Remember they're inked. Yes. The whole section, the nib, and everything going to come out, right? And and while we're at it, we can take a look at this clutch ring too. You'll see how in this one it's. It's that pretty, stays with the it's, body. It's I think mine came with the nice. nose. Yeah, I mean mine it comes out. It comes out, but this one stays in there pretty good. So yeah. should I make sure it stays with the body? Uh, it doesn't really matter, because otherwise it's gonna. You can there keep it either way. It doesn't really matter. Um, so now these don't these, these these are, are full of ink. Whoops. Um, could I now clean it with a syringe? Like I do with a pelican? Ah, uh, I have. You could. I suppose you point. could. Okay. I suppose you could, yeah. So, yeah. how do I get this nib out of here? Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I've got this upside down here and I'm just going to, I'm just literally just going to push on this. Does it take any force at all? Uh, not too much. Yeah. You can get it out without really okay. getting too much on your finger. And we're going to swap these nibs? Uh, I Yeah. Okay. You mean the whole so nib unit, right? And, and, and what I would do here is that, you know, I would. Just, I don't know what color ink you got in there, but it's just, oh, that's it, I mean, you, you see the nib here, it, it's crimped over on here. I mean, you don't really want to take that off. It's you already, could, but you don't have to. You don't have to. It's already on there. Does it slide off like the other Lamy's? Like a uh, it's a little bit harder to get off. Okay. It's a little bit harder. So there's, there's no need. Don't take the nib off. There's no need to take the nib off. There really isn't. Uh, but now, then, how so, do you go back in? So we, it only goes in one way, obviously. And so what I'll do is I'll just put it in. That's why I do this upside down because I can see it a little bit better. Try to keep that flat, and I'm just going to push it in there. And if I get it right, it will just, you notice it just popped out yeah. like that. It took me a couple of times. Um, you, if you can't, if it doesn't do it right away, I push this back out. Say I put this in a little crooked. Like I did. Oh, you're just too good at this. I just do, you, you can look here. You can look through the hole and kind of rotate it, pull it back out until you... It's, it's really hard to do that way until you see it line up and then you can push it in. And then I'm just going to put it back on the barrel. Yeah, make sure your, make sure your make clutch sure, ring goes does back. Does the clutch ring have to be anywhere special or just wherever it, it falls? It does because there's... Um, oh, it does on the Yeah, on, the on, on, on that one there, it sits 
on the macrolon, it actually sits in a groove in the section. So you want that to line up. On the steel, it sits in a groove in the barrel. That's the main difference. Oh, okay. That's why this one. So you really, on that one, we should probably make sure it's set up. I'm going to, before I tighten it, I'm going to say that's where it belongs. Yep. Or set it in place in the section first, lock it in place, and then screw it down. Does it lock in place? Well, it doesn't lock in place, but it'll slot in place because there's, a, there's yeah. a groove cut out for it. I believe I locked it in place. Yeah. And I think that lined up. So, yep. Yeah, that looks good. You don't want to over tighten it, but you want to make sure oh, it's, I may have. It's, it's nice, nice and tight. So. All yeah, right. There we go. So there you go. Oh, you've got your newly ground nib in your stainless steel. Fantastic. And your and other I one. And I have inky fingers. And, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't do too bad. No, that's, that's why we left it for the end. Uh, but if you, if, 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 obviously, if it's not inked, then you, you won't have that issue really uh, at all. So, But you don't but you can taking the sections off of these to clean them. Like, no, To clean my I pelican, wouldn't. I always take the nib out. You've seen me do that a million times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You probably don't like that I do that. Uh, yeah, I don't like any more, any more movement than is absolutely necessary. Yeah. Uh, but on those, yeah, and, and on, on Lamy 2000s, I... I no, they're probably not made. I, I don't have one anymore, but when I did, I, I never, ever took the section off. So. Please uh, like this video. Consider subscribing to our channel. Join us next week for the disassembly and cleaning of, what are they? Piston, Piston converters. converters. Piston yeah. converters. Um, uh, I've got nothing else. Do you have anything else? That's all I got. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next week. See you next week. Bye.